Hi, this is Greg Thomas, and welcome to the Welsh American Channel. Today, I am delighted and honored to have Robert Humphreys as our guest. Robert is the director of the Great Plains Welsh Heritage Center in Wymore, Nebraska, and he's going to share with us the rich history of the Welsh pioneers in Nebraska and the surrounding region. Robert, welcome to the Welsh American Channel. Well, the Alchem Vaur, my blesser Maur, Vodema Ias Scorsio Gadachi Hedio. It's a great pleasure to chat with you today, uh, Greg. Right. It's wonderful to have you with us. So, Robert, let the audience know a bit about your background. You're obviously a Welsh speaker, you're obviously Welsh, uh, Welsh origin. So, give us a little bit about your background, if you would, and how you became associated with the center. Well, um, I am an, Im- uh, I'm an immigrant to the United States. I was born in Newport in South Wales and um, moved with my family back, uh, uh, back. Actually, it's been about 35 years ago uh, and uh, went to college here in the United States in, in Ohio, actually, at mm-hmm. Miami University. Uh, later on, I, um, I acquired a uh, I earned a master's in Celtic studies at the University of Wales. Ah. Uh, and um, I currently actually reside in uh, Wisconsin, and uh, the role I've recently taken on as the director of the Great Plains Welsh Heritage Centre is something which I do a lot of that work remotely, but I also um, make regular visits um, on on site to the uh, to the to the Great Plains Welsh Heritage Centre, which obviously I'll explain in a little bit sure. uh, more detail right. later. So after earning my master's in mm-hmm. Celtic studies, actually during that process. Uh, I I wrote a thesis about the the Welsh in southwestern Wisconsin, and uh, exam- read deeply in the uh, primary source material uh, about mm-hmm. um, Welsh immigration in the mid nineteenth century, and uh, ultimately the assimilation of those uh, Welsh people into American society um, over the course of the late nineteenth and early twentieth centuries, and I um, reached out to uh, the Great Plains Welsh Heritage uh, Project mm-hmm. uh, to find out uh, if they had some materials. And uh, after receiving my degree, I I I, uh, I I became such good friends with some of the people involved here, uh, and was so interested in the subject matter that I started to um, you know volunteer my time translating things. Uh, I helped in 2016 to 2017. I helped write and produce a um, a video, mm-hmm. a, a 20 minute mini documentary called uh, "Pobble a Pythe, um People of the Prairie, the Welsh in Nebraska," and uh, that was that's something that uh, you can see on YouTube. It was mm-hmm. also broadcast on public television here in Nebraska. So. Um, so I've been very active as, ever since uh, for the last decade or so, uh, helping out this organization. And uh, recently I've taken on this role of um, of director. Wonderful. Well, great. Congratulations. And of course, um, Wisconsin is noted for many um, Welsh Americans living there. I've been to Taliesin, which was one of the homes of Frank Lloyd Wright, who yes. was uh, proudly himself, proudly proclaimed himself to be of Welsh descent. So there are a lot of Welsh in uh, your neck of the woods, and that's really great. So what is the Great Plains Welsh Heritage Centre? Well, um, the Great Plains Welsh Heritage Centre, um, and you know, we, we talk about the Great Plains Welsh Heritage Centre. Uh, the overarching sort of organisation is the Great Plains Welsh Heritage Project. And that was begun about uh, 20 or so years ago, um, actually I think about 23 years ago now, and um, with uh, it was a local history project essentially mm-hmm. uh, that was initiated by the descendants of of some of these Welsh settlers who uh, arrived in uh, in the the Wymore area in the late nineteenth century, and um, they wanted to honour their uh, their ancestors and um sort of revive and uh, revitalize the memory of that of that uh, ethnic heritage and uh so they uh they they got together they they eventually they they, they purchased a building mm-hmm. in downtown Wymore and um and 
you know, in, in order to preserve the history uh, that they were collecting. And um, just to sort of give you a background here on sure. you know, why it's this location. So there was a Welsh community here that, that began in in the in around the 1870s, 1880s. There were Welsh people that started arriving in rural this the rural area around what is today Wymore. At that time, there's a there's a another town called Blue Springs that had already been established. And um the town of Wymore was actually begun in 1881, um, when uh one of the Welsh settlers and another settler whose name was Samuel Wymore, who was not Welsh, mm -hmm. um, both um gave land to the uh or sold land to the railroad company, and then the town of Wymore was established. Um the story is that um uh Samuel Wymore, uh, the story I've heard is that Samuel mm -hmm. Wymore donated the land and uh Owen Jones who was the Welsh Welshman sold the land to the railroad company and the and the uh the town was named after Wymore because they thought he was more generous in just donating <laughs> than selling the land um but uh a few miles south of of here is um as a cemetery it's called the Bethel cemetery and it's there that many of the Welsh um uh, settlers and their ancestors, uh, sorry, and their descendants are mm -hmm. are buried, um, because that that area around there was where the Welsh settled, mostly on farms outside of the town. There were some Welsh people who have it, however, who came and and um, and and settled in the town of Wymore. Uh, in fact, one of our uh, one of our volunteers and board members, um, actually, her father came to. Uh, to Weimar, so she's a first oh, generation wow. yeah. uh, Welsh immigrant herself. Um, her her father came to Weimar in I think around 1911. Ah, um, okay. So uh, we have we have very very close connections. Um, our board president um, uh, Gwyneth Klaus uh, Colgrove uh, and other people actually in you know on the board of our organization still maintain very uh, close relations with uh, with their with their family in Wales. And um, know who their cousins are over there. They they visited them, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so so there's a very strong there are very strong ties that remain um, to this day between uh, the 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 the, um, the Welsh people of of Wymore and mm -hmm. you know their their family members and and right. cousins over in Wales. That's great. Well, you explained the why in Wymore to me. I yes. appreciate that <laughs> very much. I was very curious. Actually, I have a master's degree from Bellevue University in Bellevue, Nebraska. Uh, so uh, a little bit of a connection there. But I was wondering of all places why Wymore uh, would have been chosen. So thanks for answering that question. So I hope to visit you folks next spring. I'd really like to spend some time at the center and visit the cemetery and so on after the snow melts here. Uh, we have a beautiful day today, but we're probably gonna have a pretty tough winter ahead of us immediately. So tell me what kind of resources are available for research or viewing at the center? Well, um, we have, uh, well, we have our museum. Um, in our museum, we have, uh, you know, a fairly, um, wide range of, of uh, artifacts mm -hmm. and um, images that are that are displayed uh, on the walls for people to 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 look at uh, a lot of interpretation of Welsh American history mm -hmm. and uh, some of this material is is very local to the Welsh community that was here at Bethel and at Wymore some of it is um, pertains more to the uh, to the wider history of of Welsh immigration to North America and and to uh, the United States, if you if you actually look behind me, um, mm -hmm. on on the wall is um, a poster for, that was that was published at the time of the eighteen ninety three World's Fair oh, wow. in Chicago, and at that time, uh, the, you, some of the uh, listeners and viewers may know that there was an actually an Eisteddfod that was held at that. Uh, at that uh, World's Fair, mm -hmm. which brought together um, uh, poets and musicians and other performers and dignitaries from both the Welsh American community and uh, and Wales itself, people across the ocean to come to Chicago uh, to hold that Eisteddfod. And 
that image behind me uh, was was uh, was a special edition uh, print uh, that was uh, that was published. It was advertised in Adrich, which of course was the is the was the Welsh American mm -hmm. newspaper of, of record, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was actually. Um, it, it was actually advertised as, as as the largest Welsh poster or picture in existence. Mm. Um, so they they were. It, it, it's unfortunately, of course, there aren't very many of these in existence. Um, this was was kindly donated to us um, by a, a supporter who found it and uh, very made a very generous donation of this of this sure. uh, poster. Right. And um, you can uh, there is also a, a copy of this in the in the Library of Congress. Um, and you can even download it from the Library of Congress. Uh, and um, I know that we've also posted, you know, it's the same thing exactly as, as mm -hmm, what we have mm -hmm. here in the center. Um, so so that's an example. The, the oldest item in our collection is a map of Wales that was published in 1610. Wow. In, in way, in, well, it was, it was published in England. It was mm -hmm. uh, made by a man named John Speed, an English cartographer. And it was donated to us by the, um, I think it was the Puget Sound Welsh uh, Society out uh, out in Seattle, mm -hmm. and um, this uh, this map, uh, I you know you may wonder why well how, what does a map of Wales in sixteen ten have to do with Welsh immigration, um, but it really you know it really shows what Wales was like. At the very beginning, it's 1610. Mm -hmm. That's just about the same time that uh, you have the um, the arrival of the Puritans in mm -hmm. um, in, in uh, New England. Right. Uh, just a few years later, you know, Jamestown. This is mm -hmm. exactly the same time that 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 of course England is starting to settle uh, people in North America and send people to to its and establishing colonies. Exactly. And Welsh people were part of that that history as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, you have you know Swansea, Massachusetts in the 1630s. You have um, the the Quakers coming then in the 1680s. So um, so it really ties into showing what Wales was like at that mm -hmm. time. And then uh, you know it's it's we we also know that Wales you know was an agrarian country at that time, right? And it would remain that way until well into the the 19th century and and the mm -hmm. you know and the industrial revolution really started right. to change things. Mm -hmm. Um so so that map shows that sort of early modern Wales that um that is the foundation of the story of Welsh uh emigration um and settlement in North America. Yeah that's great. So that's an example uh, mm -hmm. We have musical instruments. Uh, we have a lot of textiles. Um, so, for example, I mean, we do, we do have you know the Welsh Americans have donated uh, clothing from you know a lot. Of, some of this is very modern clothing, but it's made in Wales, mm -hmm. and it, it shows examples of of sort of traditional Welsh, um, uh, you know, wool crafts and and um, uh, and artistry. Uh, we have a lot of we have of possessions of Welsh Americans. Mm -hmm. um, we have some items that are you know might be considered antiques, but uh, you know we have collection of gaudy Welsh china, uh, <laughs> and also some some other some other um, ceramics uh, mm -hmm. that uh, that belong to Welsh Americans. So many of these are, are items that people brought with them from from Wales um, that were you know kept in mm -hmm. in families. Yeah. Uh, so, so there's a we have an immigrant's trunk, for example. We have a you know that that they brought with them on the ship uh, from Wales. Uh, we have a library here, um, which uh, is well stocked with books about Wales, Welsh history, Welsh American history, uh, genealogical um, uh, information. Uh, so there's there's a, a great resource there. We would definitely encourage people to come and visit. And spend some time here if they're looking for their family history. There, there may be some resources here that could help them. Um, then the other part of of what we have here is is called the um, the archive for Welsh America, hmm. and in that it's a it, it is a purpose built uh, structure that's added onto our museum and cultural center, and that um, 
and it, and it was it was uh, it was it was built uh, about a, about ten years ago, and um, it, uh, it it was built to be uh, you know it has a, a, a state of the art fire suppression system, and it's kept at a uh, the, the the correct temperature for for storing um, archival materials, and uh, it's tornado proof, which is really important in this awesome. part of the country. Uh, sure. So uh, we have this 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 uh, archival room, and um, in that archival room, we we house uh, a lot of the things that have been donated to us. Um, you know, some of those things have been taken out of the, you know out for mm -hmm. display, but. Uh, right. We have a lot of, you know, we have documents, we have um, uh, letters, manuscripts, uh, we have a lot of uh, church record books, Welsh church record books. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we have is the um, is a temperance pledge book uh, from <laughs> the Bethel Welsh Church, and uh, it, it had this, you know, all of these uh, Welsh uh, settlers who who wrote down that they, you know, they mm -hmm. took the oath right. not to drink any alcohol. Right. Um, and so we have, you know, th those kind of, um, we have record books from, from Welsh communities, Welsh Sunday schools, um, dating back to the, to the mid 19th century. Um, we have, you know, ephemera like pamph pamphlets and, um, and religious tracts. And, uh, uh, I think, you know, one of the things we have, you know, for example, is, you know, a Welshman's account of. His journey to Dakota, mm -hmm. uh, the Dakota Territory in the 1800s, and you know that's that, that's sort of a little pamphlet that uh, uh, that we have. Um, we have uh, we have photographs, of course, family photographs. We have a lot of photographs, of course, of this of, of the Welsh community mm -hmm. that was right here. Um, right. But we do have items from further afield, and then we have uh, a lot of. Uh, a lot of artifacts and records from Welsh organizations. Uh, for example, the we have some items that were uh, that belong to the um, the American Order of True Ivorites, uh, you know, which was a, a Welsh friendly or benevolent society that was mm -hmm. uh, that started in Wales and was um, was uh, was brought to America by Welsh immigrants. And um, uh, we have some. So you know some of their their programs and, mm -hmm. and uh, memorabilia, um, uh, ribbons, for example, of of you know the various officers. Uh, we have um, a uh, we have a lot of records of um, various Welsh societies. Um, so the uh, that that includes uh, societies from all over North America. Mm -hmm. And you know, not just not just here in in the Great Plains, right, uh, or or the Midwest, but uh, mm -hmm. East Coast, West Coast. Um, mm -hmm. uh, an item that we're particularly uh, proud of uh, that was kindly donated to us by the uh, Cambrian Benevolent Society of Chicago ah. uh, is a a banner, um, a Welsh dragon banner. Uh, that uh, we think uh, was goes back to the 1930s. Oh wow! And yeah. um, we have that on display in our auditorium, mm -hmm. so that uh, so that people can see it. And uh, you know that's that's a, a truly a, a unique and, and special artifact. So yeah, we have a wide range. We we really have also become the the sort of depository for. Um, materials uh, belonging to various and created by various mm -hmm. Welsh American organizations. Yeah. Uh, so uh, everything from the uh, Welsh North American Association mm -hmm. uh, to um, uh, to like the Wisconsin Gaman Vagani uh, Association and Cymdaithas um, Madog, you know, the Welsh language, um, uh, the, the Welsh language course, uh, course Cymraeg, you know, all of those things, a lot of, you know, all of those organizations have, have uh, donated their records uh, to our, uh, to our archive, um, because mm -hmm. it's a place that, 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 you know, is built for sure. you know, keeping those items safe and preserving them. Right, great. Well, it sounds like there's a lot there. So someone could easily come 
and spend half a day a day just going through the center and seeing all there is to see and learning the rich history and the artifacts and the things that you have available for people to see. So that's really great. Yes, um, I'd like to add too that uh, mm -hmm. we do also have a um, another building which is a, a schoolhouse. It was that we take care of. It, it was uh, it, it was built in the early early twentieth century, and mm -hmm. many of the Welsh, many of the children of Welsh immigrants and and the other settlers. So there were also uh, Germans, Czechs, Irish that were living in this community at that time. They, um, their, their children attended the school, and actually, mm -hmm. it, it, uh, it did not actually close until the uh, until the 18, the nineteen sixties. And uh, the, you know, our board president, for example, is a you know went attended the school, and um, uh, it's it's been moved from its original location, and it's in the park here in Wymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also something that if you come here, you you can you can visit. Um, you can just let one of our uh, staff members know that you're interested in visiting and they'll, they, they can uh, help you, uh, you know, gain, right. gain access to it, to take a look. Yeah. So, so there's a lot, there's a lot for you to yeah, see. Absolutely. There certainly is. Great. What Welsh cultural activities are available today in the Great Plains in Nebraska or the Dakotas or the Great Plains? Well, I would say, um, you know, throughout the West, the Great Plains and and the Midwest mm -hmm. too. I mean, there are mm -hmm. a lot of uh, Welsh Welsh activities that take place. There are some Welsh societies. Um, I know if you go down in, to Kansas City, for example, they have a Saint David Society. There is a uh, Saint David Society Welsh Society of of Nebraska. Um, of course, we have here the Great Plains Welsh Heritage mm -hmm. yes, um, Center, and um, you know, now that, you know, we're certainly hoping to get back now into doing some more events and getting, um, mm -hmm. getting our doors open more so for, for, uh, people to come in and, and, um, sure. and enjoy what we have here. Um, you know, there are, uh, you know, probably the most significant thing that, that we've done recently, uh, to celebrate Welsh culture was the North American Festival of Wales, which was held in Lincoln, Nebraska, this uh, just this oh, past year, wonderful, uh, awesome. Day weekend, yeah, and we had um, several hundred people come and visit um, nice. and stay in Nebraska for a, a weekend of. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there were seminars, uh, presentations. Uh, there was uh, a lot of singing. We had the mm -hmm. we had uh, the Gaman Vagani on the Sunday, which is mm -hmm. you know which is the massive hymn sing with. Right. Um, a lot of people singing in Welsh, mm -hmm. and um, nice. we had guests from Wales uh, who came to speak. Uh, so this uh, we 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 had corgis too. So great. <laughs> <We had laughs> ah, right. uh, so we we uh, had uh, an, a grand concert with some uh, some some famous performers from Wales as well. So mm -hmm. um, there's that that was a a, a wonderful event that that um, that really showcased Welsh culture to. Uh, in, in you know mm -hmm. here two people on the great plains and you know we also of course part of that uh festival was a visit to uh down to wymore which we're about an Excellent. hour south of lincoln yeah sure. just the our museum and and the yeah. Welsh cemetery and the schoolhouse that we have as part of our um museum as well so um so that's one of the biggest things uh i know that um you know, various various communities do have mm -hmm. their Welsh societies and uh, Welsh organisations. Uh, you know, if you if you want to go back a little bit to the east and and more in the Midwest and the Great Plains, I mean, mm -hmm. there, there is a very active um, Gaman Vagani Association in Wisconsin, for example, um, and you know, Chicago has a has a couple of Welsh yes. organisations, the Cambrian mm -hmm. Benevolent Society. The uh, um, there's also the Chicago Tafia. Uh, which is a an organization <laughs> of Welsh, uh, okay. uh, Welsh, uh, Welsh, um, Welsh immigrants. Uh, some some very current and recent Welsh immigrants I know are involved in that. So, um, so there's a lot that's that's going on. Um, and uh, you know, of course, today with 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 things like Zoom, uh, mm -hmm. you can you can do a lot more things uh, exactly. together while we are uh, hundreds of miles apart, which sure. uh, which is really good. So. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot going on, and you know, you can Good. go to our website, greatplainswelsh.org, um, 
uh, you know, and and uh, see what we have here. We also are on Facebook, and um, we, um, you know, we hope to be uh, getting some more, um, uh, getting some of our events, uh, you know, webcasts so that people mm-hmm. can can join in from a distance as well as uh, as Excellent. well as coming here in person. Yeah, great. So if someone wanted to give a donation to the Great Plains Welsh Heritage Center or project, how could they do that, Robert? Well, um, at this point, um, probably the best thing to do would be to, um, to if you, you're talking about donations of, uh, of, of a physical, you know, something for the museum, or are you talking about like a, mon- a monetary donation? Both. Both, okay. Both. Maybe someone wants to write a check, or maybe someone <laughs> has something in their trunk they pulled out that's been in their family <laughs> For three generations, and they'd like to give it a good home, and it's you know originally of Welsh origin or related to the Welsh heritage. Well, I would say that mm-hmm. um, uh, the best thing, the the the, the, the what, what I would suggest is uh, if you want to make a donation of uh, an mm-hmm. item mm-hmm. for a um, or you would like to make a financial do- donation, is to is to reach out to us. Um, we do have on our website the um, address that you can send if you wanted to send us a check. Right. Um, uh, we would like to. We're, we're working on getting things uh, set up so that people can mm-hmm. can donate directly online, electronically. Right. Um, and uh, if people would like to to donate an item, I would strongly suggest they they connect with us first because mm-hmm, sure. we do have limited space in our archive. Mm-hmm. But we do have to be fairly careful about what we what we um mm-hmm. what we accept just because of um of just the space issues sure. that we have right. um and uh you know we don't want to uh you know we, we want to accept as many things as we can but we want to make mm-hmm. sure that they're they're appropriate for for our uh, museum and archive um so i would suggest that 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 you connect with uh, you can actually send me an e- email it's mm-hmm. uh, the email address is director at greatplainswelsh.org and um, we can connect that way, and um, uh, we're 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 very happy to to see what people have, um, and and what people would like to donate, and um, you know just you know send me a message, and yeah. uh, we will take a look and see if it's something that we would like to take. And again, if you would like to make a monetary donation, mm-hmm. again, I would suggest uh, go to the website. You can find the information on there where you can send us um, that donation. And um, stay tuned because we will have uh, we will have an electronic option uh, in the near future. Fantastic! And in the comments area of this video, we will uh, put his full address down there. So if you have a monetary donation, the address will be connected to the comments. Well, Robert, thank you so much for your knowledge and your historical insight on Welsh American history today. I'd like to mention in closing, uh, Robert mentioned beginning in this video, there are two other videos on YouTube that highlight his uh, keen knowledge of Welsh migration in the United States. The first one is entitled Welsh American History, the Great Plains Heritage Project. And this was a PowerPoint presentation given to the Chester Library. And I will have that link also below in our comments area. And then the second one he mentioned are the people of the prairie, the Welsh in Nebraska. Uh, Robert is an excellent narrator of this uh, very short but dynamic and interesting documentary. And again, I'll put the link to that uh, below as well. Well, I hope you found this presentation interesting. Please let us know in the comments below and be sure to give us a like. And if you ring the bell, you will immediately be notified of new videos that we post. Special thanks to Robert for his time today. And I'd like to thank all of you for being part of the Welsh American channel. This is Greg Thomas saying goodbye for now, and we'll see you next time.